So this is Victoria. Barbara Durant points to a southern white rhino at an off-exhibit area at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. And you can't tell from the outside that she's pregnant unless you're lucky enough to see the baby kick which we often can see from the outside. If we're really lucky, we might see it right now. But you, you really can't tell. She, she hasn't gained that much uh, girth. The baby she's carrying is the product of artificial insemination, a process being developed by Durant's team. She wants all six to have a successful insemination. Eventually, the reproductive physiologist wants to do something that's never been done before. She wants to implant a rhino embryo that is brought to term. But Durant says the rhino's birth canal presents a problem. It's large, for one thing. It's very deep within the abdominal cavity, which makes it difficult to access as well. But it has a number of cartilaginous rings that interlock this way. So there's no clear pathway through the cervix when you want to deposit semen or an embryo into the uterus. The cervix opens up a bit when the rhino is in heat, allowing Durant to use a long, straight metal catheter for artificial insemination. But that won't work for embryo implantation. The embryo is going to be growing in vitro or in the lab for about 10 to 12 days. So the cervix of this animal, these recipients, is going to be closed. So the only way we're going to be able to get through that cervix is with something that's not rigid and something that we can steer from outside the animal. So in my lab, we're developing robotic tools. That something is being developed about 30 miles away in a robotics lab on the UC San Diego campus. Professor Michael Yip is working on a tool that will help navigate the rhino cervix and deliver an embryo to the animal's uterine horn. The idea is that you have a long, flexible device uh, with tendons that run through um, the end all the way to the handle. and we can pull on those tendons like you would marionette a puppet, but in this case, we're actually deflecting the end of this robotic tool. Yip is modeling the new tool on endoscopes that can be used to inspect a person's colon or lungs without creating an incision. The rhino version is much smaller. Once the device is inserted into the mouth, the catheter can be maneuvered until it reaches a target location. Just like you know, the branches of um, uh, the branching out of your lungs, uh, the same thing applies to um, animals that might have several different pathways for their reproductive system, much like the rhino where they have two different uterine horns and you're trying to make sure that you're entering the right channel versus the other. So the idea is that the end will track the same motions as the 3D pen. Undergraduate student Renal Verghese is helping Yip work out different controllers. The finished product could end up being like a gaming controller, an electronic pen, or a small knob on a handheld device, which seems to be the most promising prototype. Verghese says the camera plays an important role. And actually lets us bring more accuracy and precision um, to the control system with the ultimate goal of making it as intuitive as possible for the user. The narrow tube on this device is hollow, and the tiny camera is threaded through it. Yip says that allows the team to see the rhino's narrow and twisting cervix as it moves along. Once you get the device articulated into the right location, uh, past the cervix, into the uterine horns of the rhino, you can actually use that hollow channel to flush through the genetic material. If successful, the procedure will be groundbreaking because it's never been done on a rhino. Durant says the first attempts will be with southern white rhino embryos conceived in the lab. It'll be southern white rhino embryos into southern white rhinos. Once we've gotten the efficiency, worked out the kinks, so to speak, with the instrumentation, and we feel confident in our technique, that's when we'll take one of those very precious northern white rhino embryos and put it into one of these southern white rhinos. Durant says the zoo has cell lines from 12 different northern white rhinos stored in a repository known as the frozen zoo. Geneticists are working on the protocols that'll turn the frozen tissue into reproductive cells. If both teams are successful, the project could help bring the northern white rhino back from the edge of extinction. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.